The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Feeling good, Lewis. It's Christmas time here at the offices of Duke & Duke, 100 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Put your fingers on your buttons, folks, and take a look at the Treasury bond market we're setting up here at 138.27 and change. And that is what we call Christmas Day, if you like Christmas Day, and most people do. And anything above 139.03 makes it uh, Black Friday. So anyway, it's a really nice three-die pattern. But do the work yourself and see why that number is so very, very important. I know we're beating up stocks quite a bit. This was not unexpected. Uh, today's guest will be uh, Norm Winsky of Astro Trends. Tomorrow we have Jim Bartolioni of Astro um, <laughs> Bart's Charts. And then on uh, Wednesday we'll have Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter as our guest. But I wanted to share with you a couple of charts that I that I think are extremely interesting. And, and I will like to show you uh, this is the chart of Apple, folks. This is why... Uh, you know, we came in this morning uh, over the weekend, of course, looking at it, that we had sort of a bearish tone to it, mainly because of what we were seeing in this chart of Apple, uh, which is a weekly chart up there at the 148 level. And uh, I was interested that one of our uh, one of our fans from uh, back east, uh, you know, sent me a uh, a nice little warning saying, man, you're going to get creamed on this one. He said, this thing's going to gap up on Monday and you're going to get hurt, so make sure you have your stop in. I said, well, don't worry, it is. First of all, I don't even trade stocks, but I was showing it because it basically mimics, you know, what the market is doing, but this is the number one stock in the world. I think more people own this than anything else, but what we're looking at here, folks, is a, a weekly chart here, so we've been rallying for quite a while, and we're right at a 382 retracement, and that is uh, very, very uh, powerful from the bearish side. And, you know, we're not even close to those numbers and the, the NASDAQ and some of the others. But that's what we were watching here. The reason why I'm only going to spend a short this short amount of time here on this, because Jim Bartolioni uh, tomorrow has done the work on this. Uh, he alerted me to this ch pattern that was happening on the hourly. And then all I did was go down to the weekly and to see where the 382 was. But Jim will be on tomorrow and talk about that. He's got some really cool stuff showing the geometry and harmony uh, in the uh, pattern for Apple. But we also have for you a special presentation of Pablo Picasso. He's a trader over there in England. I think, no, in Italy, I think, is where the dude is from. He's he's a, he's trades incognito now. But I wanted to show you this beautiful chart that our friend Jeff from uh, New Jersey sent us. And it is the colorful version of the same chart. Now, th this is really beautiful, folks. You can see it's the same pattern. Uh, all we're doing here is we're looking at that beautiful ABCD that measures right up there in perfection, you know, setting right there at the old number that we were just looking at. This is a little shorter time frame, of course, but it's the same pattern. And that just shows you, you know, what we're looking at here in some of these. that They just repeat over and over again. You know, not all the time, but, you know, my goodness, most of the time, you know, anyway. Now, a couple things that I think are relatively important here is I've changed up. Uh, I wanted to get this up here because if you know those of you that get my videos, I, I, I thought we had a really good chance of a pretty good bottom in the gold market and also a pretty good bottom in the currency markets. And I was wrong. I mean, I took a when well, we took about a 30 pip loss in the euro trade, and you notice here this is the open interest uh, chart versus the uh, price of gold. You can see the price of gold coming down, and you can see the price of open interest going down. When that happens, you see 
the formula is if you have prices falling and open interest falling, the market is actually strengthening. So I assumed because we hit that 1726 that we were going to have a pretty good bottom. And so I said, well, what we'll do is we'll buy on a retracement down at the 61% retracement level. And if we get failed, you know, we'll keep our stop in at $6, you know, so we don't have to risk very much. And what I did, of course, this morning, let's just get this up here so you folks can see it. The reason why I changed my mind and, and didn't leave the stop at the 1730 uh, was be hold on just a second. What am I doing wrong here? I did something wrong here. There we go. I think that'll do it. Yeah, you can see once we got down, we instead of stopping at the 618 that I assumed we were going to stop at, we stopped at the 78% level. Then we've rallied up. And so at that particular point, I said, you know, raise your stop up to 1735. That way you only have a $1 risk, 100 bucks. Now, the reason why I did that was I was basing this on that the U.S. dollar was turning. I was also thought the open interest looked pretty good. But one of those two factors no no longer plays into it because the euro just kept dropping and dropping and dropping. And so you don't want to be you don't want to be long gold when the dollar is, you know, going straight up. And speaking of the dollar going straight up, I mean it's had some, you know, really big moves. And one of the things that, you know, we were looking at for today was that dollar index. Just because it had such a, a really neat pattern. This is the daily chart of it. We'll get it up here. And so you can take a quick look at it. But I want you to notice that the top level there, we'll post it on the chart here so everybody can see it. At the very top up here, you see that level right there? That is the 1.618 expansion. We hit that just a little while ago, folks, at 107 and change. So that told me my premise that this thing had topped on Friday was not sound. It looked like it was sound, but, you know, like anything else, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So let's uh, let's remind ourselves that, you know, it's not about how much money you make. It's about how much money you don't lose. And that's the key to doing what we're doing here. And I hope that helps a little bit. Let's get on to something that's really happening, folks. And we got to pay close attention to it. And that is you'll never guess what that's going to be, boys and girls. Hold on. If I can get it, here it comes. This is the corn market, and we have to pay close attention because we missed the first train, and I think the second train is coming in here tomorrow. We have another crop report tomorrow. It's the July crop report, and that's going to be a big one also. But you can see here we made the ABCD to the downside. Here's where we closed on Friday. We opened up $0.34 cents, uh, a bushel Sunday night, stopping exactly to the tick at the 50% retracement of that high we made back here you know, about 10 days ago. Now, now we're backing off a little bit. But what's really important is we got this report tomorrow. Uh, the weather has switched again. It's it's gotten extremely hot with dryness coming in, and that means with that high pressure, oh dear, you got to be really careful. So you want to watch the report coming in here tomorrow. We'll I'll have some more. I'll do a vi another video tonight looking at the areas what we want to be watching for because we do want to get in that corn market because uh, and also the bean market. They have, they have some great potential there that we came off of there so quickly. We rallied over $4,000 in three trading days, folks. And I'm standing there at the bus stop with two quarters in my hand wondering when that next, next bus is coming. And that's not always a fun feeling. So we'll be watching it closely here as we go into the crop report, the July crop report. Not as big as the one that we had, but big. We'll be right back, 877-927-6648. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational 
as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. C C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I posted the chart of the Treasury bonds on a daily basis. You can see the 382 that we had up there at the 146 level, and all we were looking at today was the 382 on the hourly chart that came in at 138.27 uh, with that little three drive pattern that we were looking at a little bit earlier. Now, I wanted to spend just a tiny bit more time here uh, with the uh, Euro folks because this is really big what's happening. I'm going to do the first one is uh, we're going to take a look at it on the uh, the daily chart because this is what I, what I assumed was happening here uh, on Friday. The fact that we had come down and made that 1.618 expansion and rallied 120 points, which was around $1,300, $1,400. And by golly, you know, I thought it was going to be pretty good, and yet we rolled over, and we're now testing those lows again, which means this bottom is not in as of yet. Now, I think it's coming, and I, I'm not going to try to pick it very many times because, you know, uh, all I do is look at patterns and how much I have to risk. That's all I'm looking at. I don't care about anything else. They can give me all the news they want. And whatever they want, it doesn't make any difference. I just want to see, you know, what's happening with these as they're as they're going through. But as we look at the uh, the price of, the, let's just get this. I want to do the long term monthly here uh, on the uh, the euro so that you can see uh, uh, how important this thing really is. We'll get this up here for a second, and then we'll take a quick look at it. See, we're we're setting right at the 78 percent level down here at par, folks. And we're at par right now, but we're we're at uh, we, you got to go up to 99.99. Then they'll they'll then that'll that'll bring in the uh, the last sellers, or that'll be the place where it'll probably turn. But because uh, it has some magic to it, but not very much. But this is the long term monthly, folks. Back here, if you can see, you know where we were back here in in uh, in 20 in 2000. Okay, uh, 2000. This was my grandson was born. Okay, we were trading. Uh, the euro at about uh, 80 and change, I believe, something like that. And then, of course, you know, gold uh, took off from there. And uh, as the euro strengthened, the dollar weakened and gold took off like a rabbit. 
And uh, so that's why, you know, we're watching these things from a longer time frame because it'll affect the gold market, too. And, you know, our long term pictures on the gold, you know, we could still break another hundred dollars because the weekly chart on the gold, you know, is telling us that, you know, we could still be looking at something that is, uh, you know, rather sinister. And, you know, this is where I'll get this up here right now because uh, we, we haven't rallied much. You know, eight or twenty bucks or something, twenty-seven dollars on Friday, and we gave almost all of that back. But you can see here, we could easily see sixteen hundred, fifteen ninety-five in the gold, and that's still a bull market because that's just nothing more than a huge ABCD uh, inside of another ABCD. So that'll be some really strong support there at seven eight six, at I believe the number is fifteen ninety-five, and that's not far away. It's one hundred and fifty dollars, and you know, gold when it runs. It can go pretty quick. So we're living interesting times as the old Chinese curse. So we'll be watching it uh, as we always do. I send out videos when I think they're important. One of the most important ones last night was the fact that we equated to what was happening with Apple with that ABCD on the weekly saying there was a strong probability that if the stock market lo- opened anywhere near unchanged that it should be sold. But it opened lower than rallied up exactly to the 382 on the Dow Jones Industrials, and then also on the Dow Jones E-mini, the industrials weren't open yet, and then also on the E-mini S&P, that number came in at uh, 39, uh, uh, 3901 uh, in the S&P, so you can check that yourself if you have time and you have an interest uh, in what, looking at it. Another one that uh, w- was very uh, interesting uh, for us here, uh, that was this Japanese currency, because with the Prime Minister... Uh, being assassinated, which is very sad. He uh, did a lot of great work. His longest reign, reigning uh, prime minister that Japan has ever had. And this is the uh, the dollar yen. And it looked like we were getting ready to, uh, you know, have a pretty nice uh, uh, Gartley here. Backed off just a little bit on Friday, but then Sunday night, uh, after the news of the uh, premier, uh, you'll see here that we went all the way up, and we have. Uh, made all-time highs over the last 40 years in the dollar yen. That's another one that is getting close to uh, 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 trend-changing, looking at the longer patterns. But, you know, if you're trading on a half-hour chart, you better forget the weeklies and the dailies. You can use those for triggers, but you've got to decide where in the heck you're going to be as far as the amount of money that you're going to risk. Because, you know, you can do a whole lot of prediction but if your prediction is wrong, you know, you can't sit there with three or four days of the market going straight up and, uh, you know, you're sitting there watching your equity, you know, dissipate. And that's not what you want to have happen. You want to go in and something that you can see very clearly that this is what I think is going to happen based on the pattern that I'm looking at. Then that's it. That Apple trade, if Apple would have opened up a dollar or something, that Apple trade would have been absolutely no good and would be running to the uh, would be going up quite a bit. So that's it. It's interesting to hear that Mr. Musk is being sued now because he doesn't want to go through with the deal with Twitter for whatever the reasons are. But if I had to bet on Twitter or I had to uh, – and Jack uh, – what's his name? Farnsworth? Jack uh, – I can't remember. Jack Swagger? No. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Mr. Twitter, whoever his name is. If you want to bet on him or bet on Elon Musk, take a guess who you'd bet on. Hello, operator. Yes. You're right, Elon Musk. I think he would be the one to look at. Now, they're all the, the legal boys. The legal legals are now involved. They have these big law firms with, you know, the, the multiple partners of uh, Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe, and all the other birds, Rabinowitz, Rabinowitz, and Rabinowitz. That's one of my favorite versions of the uh, All in the Family when uh, – Carol O'Connor was uh, Archie wanted to get a, an attorney, and they were looking at the firm of Rabinowitz and Rabinowitz and Rabinowitz, and he said, "Get the old one; he's the smartest." <laughs> oh, I, I really like that. I, I got to meet uh, Carol O'Connor uh, several times, and uh, he's just a super nice guy. Oh God, was he religious! But just a really, really nice guy. Anyway, let's move on to a couple other things here. We're going to have our guest here is Mr. Astro Cycles himself. Astro Trend out of Naples, Florida, will be joining us here in about uh, five minutes. And I wanted to cover uh, one other one that I think is really in play anyway that we have to, you know, watch very, very closely. And that is the silver market because we have made some major. We're 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 really knocking on the door here, folks. I, I 
I'm watching this open interest really closely because, uh, you know, open interest dropping and prices going down is not bearish. It's just that you got players leaving the market. You notice the high here. We're back at those old highs where we were two and a half years ago. And that's a big A, B, C, D. And if you like A, B, C, D, you got to pay attention. So that's what I'm trying to do is to get in without risking an arm and a leg or even a toenail, for a matter of fact, because I would like to get long gold and silver down in here. But I know if we break much lower, we could be buying gold about $140 lower. And that, my friends, will definitely be Christmas Day, because there's when you want to be looking at that gold at around 1595 because if that comes in, it's Billy Ray Valentine, Capricorn, Christmas Day. Open the vaults and buy a couple of Cougar Rands or whatever you want to buy. But uh, if we get there, we're going to be great. We'll be right back with the Winsky man himself, Norm Winsky, 877-927-6648. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have fresh from Naples, Florida, the king of astrotrends.com, Mr. Norm Winsky. Norm, how are you doing today? Great. Thanks for having me on, Larry. Well, it's our pleasure. Why don't you tell the folks what we'll be looking at today? Okay, I haven't been on your show for like six weeks, so I'm not, I didn't think it would be relevant to do my usual review. I like to do educational stuff, though. You know, huh? uh, catch a fish for a uh, <laughs> is the thing. Uh, catch a fish and uh, uh, give it. Give a man a fish. There we go. Give a man a fish. He'll eat for a day. Teach a man to fish. He'll eat for a lifetime. I like to help people 
teach the people how to fish so they can eat for a lifetime. Here's a here's so I'm going to go back just look at two with sort of windows here of things that were happening in the last couple of weeks. End of June, night of the 27th of June, we had Neptune turning retrograde. Okay, Neptune is oil. The next night we had a new moon. So I as you, I don't know if you read my updates or not, Larry, but I have nightly email updates. I told the folks, here's the chart as of the night of the 27th. The crude oil the previous week had dropped $18. Then we were coming back up into the night of the 27th. I said, it looks like we, I think we'd taken out the 50% retracement. I said, I think we had a shot at uh, maybe getting to the 618, which would be a 111.04 to the penny. And uh, I thought the, the top could stretch another day into the New moon. The next, that, and that's what happened. It rallied into the night of the 28th, into the midday, the 29th, and the and the uh, here's the the uh, day before. Then the next day, here's the chart. The next day, as you see here, uh, we got on the 29th, we got to 111.14. This is September crude oil, and then it dropped about nine handles over the next three or four days. So that's pretty good, right? That's very good. 10 cents through our Fibonacci target within one day of Neptune turning retrograde. That worked out pretty well. Okay, so keep that in mind. Next time Neptune's doing something, keep your eye on the crude oil. Then the next uh, uh, interesting thing we had is back here on the night of the 5th, uh, you were just talking about corn, I think. And uh, corn was going down, down, down like that. And then we got to the, when you have the AC over the night, the markets often turn the next morning or the next day. And look what happened here on the 6th. The corn bottomed, uh, December corn bottomed at 566 and a half. And then now we're up, as you mentioned, I think about what, 80, 90 cents now, right? And the, uh, I think, as you mentioned, uh, 655 is a 50% retracement. So now over the week, this past weekend, we just had Mercury uh, perihelion, which I'll be talking about here when I talk about what's what's coming up right now and in the next couple of days, so we have a and we, and we have a moon coming up too. So anyway, those were two interesting things that happened here over the last two weeks. And Mercury, Mercury is the grains. All this stuff applies to the stock market, of course. But in in terms of commodities, the commodities are narrow filters that tend to only respond to a, a certain things. So there you go. So Mercury is grains. We just had another Mercury event. Over the weekend, we had Mercury bottom the corn there and the other greens on the 6th. All right, looking ahead here, here's something I sell them every show. I have showed on your show before. I do fractals. I do. I have figured out a way to do fractals at a simple level. I cannot do advanced mathematics. You probably, if you Google fractals, you'll get, you know, calculus and stuff like that. I can barely spell calculus. And so, therefore, I have figured out how to reduce everything to a grade school level. Uh, here, you know, it all went back. I started uh, looking at this back in the late 70s, early 80s when I stumbled on as January go, so goes the year. I didn't realize at the time that's a fractal statement. It's called the January barometer. Then as I went along, I studied more and more of that sort of thing and expanded it and so forth. So, anyway... Here's the January barometer, or uh, it's a type of fractal, uh, for the S&P. Here are the blue bars, what happened in January, and then we uh, overlaid the prices. This t I took you into early August, and here's what's exciting. What you can't see here, I have the rest of the, I have this all laid out for the year, you know. And so it's going to get, according to this model, if we follow this model, it's going to get really exciting in August. We have the potential to have a huge, I don't even I don't even know the word for it. It's bigger than huge, a very big move in the stock market in the month of August. Okay. Now here's this is even more this might be even more interesting. Look how well this is tracking for the bonds. You see that? And this says that we're making a little top. We just made a little top here or make a top here in the bonds that they're probably gonna go back down. So anyway, that's the fractals. I have this at the year's half over. So if you want to contact me, I've just marked it down into half price. And so you can get that. And you get a, a I can teach this in about 10 to 15 minutes. And you get a class, and it's very inexpensive. So 
contact me if you think you might be interested in that. And by the way, any of you folks who are allergic to astrology, this is all astro-free. It's all based on time and price patterns. There's no astrology involved in that. Okay, here we go. Here's what's coming up over this past weekend that we're doing this Monday midday. And over this weekend, we just had AC is after the close, after Friday's close over the weekend. We got big stuff to the U.S. chart. Anytime we have the U.S. US natal chart, we take the U.S. natal chart is where we take a snapshot of where the plants were back on the 4th of July, 1776. And by the way, if you don't know, one of our uh, main founding fathers, Mr. Benjamin Franklin, he was an astrologer and advised Thomas Jefferson when he should sign the Declaration of Independence and and bring our country into uh, founding there, you know. And so there we go. So we have uh, anytime we have the U.S. chart, U.S. stocks, T-bonds, U.S. dollar, you were just talking about these markets. And over the weekend, we had uh, Mercury perihelion there. I just mentioned that. That's anytime you have Mercury doing something, that's your grain. So we're at a possible turning point here for the, for the grains. And then we also hear another huge cycle for the U.S. Pluto's back to where it was 248 years ago when the country was founded. And now, you know, the outer planets, that's uh, one of the outer planets, the slow-moving outer planets, uh, they kind of uh, zigzag their way forward, two steps forward, one step back. Pluto already hit this point back in February, February 21, within three days of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, which had big ramifications for our country in terms of our economy and so forth. And now it's going retrograde and hitting that point again over this past weekend. And so I, I'm not sure what it all, all means, but we were, we were looking for a change in trend in the stocks, T bonds, and U.S. dollar over this weekend. And then this morning we have another point to the U.S. chart uh, again, and then uh, and then also this afternoon. So a huge cluster here for the U.S. plus your greens. That's what's happening now. And here's the uh, here's the charts as of uh, over the weekend. Friday's close. There's the S&P 500 rallying up and. The, now we're down. I was on our last look a little while ago. Uh, bonds are down. I don't know if they've turned up or not, but we're looking for a change of trend in the bonds. Have the bonds turned up there this morning yet, Larry? Uh, I don't know, Norm. I, I can't check prices while I'm on the air here, so I don't know. I, the oh, last okay. I no saw problem. was at 138.26 or something. There you go. And here's the dollar. And I know you're kind of on the got the uh, euro and the bargain basement shopping oh. list there. And, uh, and, no, and it, the sale was a no sale. They took my two hundred and fifty dollars and left me there holding a scarf that I didn't want to buy. So I left. Well, because you know it, it trades inversely to the dollar usually. If it sure, doesn't turn yeah. today, uh, your big uh, window for the, all the currencies is going to be probably Wednesday afternoon. Oh, we got the, oh, the music. Good. Okay. Hey, that Wednesday afternoon. That's good to know. Hey, we'll be right back with Norm Winsky, Astro Trans folks. Hang in there. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks. We're speaking with Astro Trends President and CEO, Norm Winsky. Norm, we have a question and also request from two of our listeners, and please repeat the section about the U.S. dollar and the importance of this day of uh, two days from now on Wednesday. Tell us why that's important, please. Okay, Wednesday afternoon, I think about 2.30, 2.35, you, you can uh, Google it or something, uh, we're going to have a full moon at Perigee. That only occurs, you usually, you, you, you know, this, these cycles, they phase <clears throat> in together, they phase out. Yeah. So we had one middle of June. We're going to get one again on Wednesday afternoon, and then it, that'll be it for about 14 months. You know, then you'll probably get two more in about 14 months, you know. But uh, what what that is, is you got the, everybody knows what a full moon is, I think. And then what happens is the full moon and the, the perigee, when the moon's closest apogee cycle the perigee cycle to be precise uh, when the moon's closest lines up with the full moon they are not the same cycle but they phase in together at this time and so you got you go out look at the sky at the full moon it looks like the moon is extra big because it's closer and that means it's probably got extra gravitational pull the potential is you got high tide uh, higher tides you, it could trigger an earthquake it could trigger all kinds of geo uh, doesn't mean it will, but if something's like on the edge, this could be the you know the feather that breaks the camel's back. You know that one, that final trigger, and it also tends to have a, 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 a an effect on the stock market. Well, in the middle of June, there we had a very high batting average on our market turns on that full moon, and I expect the same to happen here about Wednesday. You know, so the currencies are really great on the moon, by the way, and you got all these currencies. The dollar's going up, up, up. Most of these currencies are going down, down, down. You probably get some kind of reaction from the moon here uh, about Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon. Uh, probably not uh, far uh, farther out than Thursday. You know. Wow. Okay. Did I that's, answer everybody's question? That that is perfection. And you know what, Norm? If it works, we're going to have you as a guest again. And if it doesn't work, we want to wish you the best of whatever you decide to do in your life. <laughs> we'll have you again, no problem. But uh, okay. this is the time. This is the kind of stuff that people like to hear. You know, that's in the future. We're two days out. You told us what to look for. So uh, when we have you on guests, we're going to you know go over that and see how it worked out. But this is what it's all about: is lining up price and time. So I'm sorry for interrupting, but please continue. No, I, and I just want to follow up on right before the commercial. Uh, we were mentioning the uh, the big three here, the U.S. Uh, markets, S&P bonds. You know, S&P we know is down. We weren't sure about the bonds. I went and looked it up. They're up about two and a half handles, and the, the dollar's still going up. So that's the, that's where we're at there. And looking ahead here now, there's your grains. We were looking for a possible top here. Now, the grains also respond to the moon, so if they don't top now, they're likely to top on the full moon there, you know, late Wednesday or early Thursday, you know. 
And yeah. there's your there's the charts as of uh, you know uh, Sunday night, mm -hmm. and uh, as you said, we were getting up to the 50% retracement there on the corn. There's your wheat, and here's here's what was coming up. I didn't get to this part yet. So there you go. There's <laughs> you sort of kind of like Jeopardy, you know. You sort of gave the answer before the question, you know. Anyway, though, <laughs> there we go. So full moon. There we go. They got the full moon in Capricorn, which means you know every month the full moon is in a different sign. And so uh, we, we're in addition to our usual suspects, financials, Grange Precious Metals, and Capricorn, we will be featuring coffee. Mm -hmm. So give Mrs. Olson a call. And there you go. For if you're a Larry's our age, you'll you'll know who Mrs. Olson was. If not, well, you can go look her up. Uh, oh, she yes. was a spokes, spokeswoman for Folgers Coffee for about 15 years. All right. Anyway, so then we have at the end of the week, over the weekend, 15th weekend, has Saturn lining up with the U.S. Neptune. That means we get anything to the U.S. We got stocks, U.S. stocks, T-bonds, U.S. dollar. And because it's to Neptune, we're going to be looking at oil also. We don't know whether these are going to be highs or lows until we get there. But right before you get there, if you're at any kind of extreme, there's 70, 75% probability that that market will reverse. If you're going sideways, like they say in Joycey, forget about it. You know? Okay. <laughs> uh, it's, it's Newton's law for every action. There's an opposite and equal reaction. So the opposite is sideways. It's just more sideways. So don't do sideways. That's it. We're looking for the extreme there. Like I showed you on the previous examples where the corn was going down, down, down. Got to extreme there on the night of the 5th and the bottom the next day and so forth. That's the kind of thing we're looking for, you know. Okay. Good. Any questions or anything? No, that that's really good. I, I really uh, this was a great session because I uh, have a strong interest in the lunar stuff, of course. And we've got this crop report on the twelfth. We got this big date coming on the thirteenth, so it's going to be really interesting around that time. So, uh, Just you want to clarify tell us in pop yep. culture, they call that a supermoon. The technical term is a lunar syzygy. That's where you have two or more cycles lining up together. Okay. Now, what's so, the opposite of syzygy? There's one on the opposite side of that, isn't it's there? It's called a micro moon. Micro moon, like we had at the end micro of June. Okay. Okay. We had a new moon at uh, apogee. That's it. We had. The, you always have the opposite point, you know, close uh -huh. by, you know, a couple of weeks away. Uh, we're phasing out now of the syzygy season. And this will uh -huh. be the last one for four. Well, actually, in seven months, it'll. You'll have the opposite. You'll have the new moon at perigee, then, and then the full moon will be at apogee. Wow, okay. that's good. Okay. So anyway, anybody who hasn't seen me before, I've been doing this a long time, not as long as Larry, but almost as long. Uh, I, I started studying the stock market when I was 15, back in the mid-60s there. I'm 71 now. And then I ca capped at it and started investing while I was at college there in Terre Haute, Indiana, at Indiana State University, home of the Fighting Sycamores. And yes. I did well, and that, uh, and I got a little bit of inheritance. Added, uh, took the inheritance and made some money, and that led to my buying a membership on the Chicago Board Options Exchange. Uh -huh. when it was a fledgling exchange in 1975, and wow. there, and that started my career. How much was how much was your seat, Norm? I paid twenty five thousand dollars for that. Wow! Now they're about five million or something, aren't they? Uh, no, well, they, you know, uh, they're all demutualized. They merge now. with they the Merck now, yeah. They, all they don't, come in they with don't Merck, do yeah. that anymore, you know. But uh, know. They, totally when different. they demutualized, they bought out the members. And that know. one, that particular membership, I think, uh, went out at about $3 million. Wow. Yeah. So, anyway, well, I got out long before that. I was happy after 12 well, years. I was 36 years old in 1987. I looked at the sixth planet lineup there. The hard body. The, yes, uh, yeah. Hard August body 25th, emergence. I remember. And, yeah. And, and, yeah, exactly. And I said, wow, this market looks like a bubble. It could be 1929 all over again. Deja vu all over again, you know. I said, I think, I, I, you know, I was getting I was getting to be an old man there at uh, 36 on the floor there. And so I decided I was going to uh, sell. I had... Three memberships. By that point, I had the big Seabell seat, and then I had like a mini option seat, and I had a mini uh -huh. border trade seat, and I, I sold them all within about six weeks of each other, and uh, to avoid because I know the history of memberships. You know, in night at the peak yeah. in twenty nine, a uh, New York Stock Exchange membership went for five hundred fifty five thousand dollars. That was a fortune back then, 
And then, at the, and, then, and then at the bottom in December of 74, it went for 35000 and that's not even adjusted for inflation, you know? Yeah, wow. And, hey, and, listen, buddy. Oh, go ahead. Hey, stay with us. Come on, we'll talk more about history. People love to hear that. We'll, we'll talk some more okay. with Norm Winskin. We'll get right back. 877-927-6648. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Norm Winsky of Astro Trans. Norm, you were born on February 17th, correct? You are correct, sir. What a lucky guess that was. Norm, uh, this, some of the question uh, Mr. Zach is asking uh, is, does, it, does the date of your birthday uh, and all the stuff surrounding that, does that affect your trading schedules? I try not to let it, you know. Obviously, if you're having a positive cycle, you, you, you know, oh. things are going smoother. But, you know, I have a very rather mechanical system here. So if you have the discipline to follow the system, it shouldn't matter, you know. Okay, so the answer to that question is a def definite no. Uh, uh, a qualified no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tell Let me just finish that story yeah. about the New York Stock Exchange seat. Yeah. In December of 74, near the bottom there, you know we bought them on the, what was that, the 9th, the 9th of December on the Dow. They're five seven zero three digits, right? And yeah. the and New York Stock Exchange seat went for, thir they announced $35,000 sale for the seat. I think within that same week, it came across the news wires that a New York taxi cab medallion 
went for 50000 It was going for more yeah. than a New York Stock Exchange sheet, which said that your chances of making a living in New York were better as a cab driver than as a member yeah. of the New York Stock Exchange. And it stayed that way for 25 or 30 years, as I recall. Well, I don't I know mean, about that. Those, but that, that, I, that I, well, I, I do know because I had several friends who were members of the New York Stock Exchange and you know, they were complaining a lot. I know so they had a way that you remember the moonlighting rule? Do you know? Did you know the moonlighting rule? I don't remember For that. For decades, no. New York Stock Exchange had a rule that you were not allowed to have a job outside of the New York Stock Exchange. They didn't, they didn't want you selling hot dogs on the street at night because it reflected badly on the exchange, you know, that, you know, yeah. why aren't you making a living, you know? Well, guess what? They had yeah. to get rid of that rule because nobody could pay their rent or their mortgage. That's how bad it was, you know? Yeah. So in the face of all that, on Friday the 6th, that's the Friday before the Monday went low, I was at the Exchange SIBO there to take my membership exam, right, the day before the low. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, so if anybody would like to get a hold of me, I got free, I'll help you out. I'll get free classes. I'll help you out. There's my contact information. Thanks, Norm. We'll see you soon. Yeah. Bye-bye, folks. See you tomorrow with Jim Bartolioni.